The winter months can be brutal for a lot of us with cold temperatures and short days. But there's no better time in astronomy to go out and observe or image the nighttime sky. In today's video, we're going to take a look at some of the best targets that you can find from the moon, planets, to deep sky objects for the months of January, February, and March of 2021. If you enjoy this video, please like it and let me know about your experience observing anything in the nighttime sky during these months in the comment section below. Let's get started by taking a look at one of our closest neighbors, in fact, the closest neighbor to Earth, our moon. As always, there are some great opportunities to observe the moon this winter. Let's talk about when we can go outside to get the best views of our closest neighbor. We'll start by looking at the phases of the moon and the best time to observe this beautiful target. January starts off the year with a new moon on the 13th and a full moon on the 28th. February sees its new moon on the 11th and full moon on the 27th. For March, the new moon will be on the 13th and the full moon on the 28th. I found the best way to study the surface of the moon is to have a guide to help me out along the way. And the Astronomical League has put together some incredible observing books that you can use to study and learn about the surface of the moon with the naked eye, binoculars, or a telescope. I'll be sure to leave a link to one of those in the description below. Try to go out and view the moon right after sunset with a pair of binoculars or telescope in between its new moon and first quarter phases. This is when the surface will look the most dynamic with long shadows stretching over its surface along with craters and mountain ranges showing great depth and detail. As we move on from the moon, let's go out deeper into our solar system and talk about some of the best views of the planets that you can observe this winter. For January, we're going to start with the closest planet to the Sun, Mercury. Now this is a difficult one to spot, but we're going to have some good opportunities for it early on this year. Because of its close orbit around the Sun, you can only see it right after sunset or before sunrise very close to the horizon. Some dates of interest include January 10th, when it will form an impressive triangle with Jupiter and Saturn. Mercury will reach its highest point above the horizon around January 26th, which will make this the best time to attempt to view or image it. Let's take a moment to track Mercury through the sky in January to show how limited the time actually is to see it at a comfortable distance above the horizon. From this perspective, you can see just how quickly it slingshots back and forth around the Sun with its orbit. Although Mars and Earth continue to move farther away from each other in our orbit after our opposition in October, it's still one of the best planets that you can view this winter in the night sky. Two unique opportunities to observe it will be February 18th, when it'll be about 4 degrees from the Moon, and March 3rd, when it is about 3 degrees from the Pleiades star cluster. These times will make it easier to find in the night sky and can provide a unique view through finder scopes and binoculars, putting these objects in the same field of view. Of the outer gas planets, the only two that are visible for the winter sky are going to be Uranus and Neptune, and they are not easy targets. A nice time to find Uranus will be around January 20th, when it is about two degrees away from Mars. Neptune is a harder target, as it sets closer to the horizon each night in the southwest sky and is much dimmer than Uranus. The best times to look for this planet will be about an hour after sunset in the month of January. Now even though these are two massive gas giants in our solar system, keep realistic perspectives of how they're going to look through the telescope. These are farther out than Jupiter and Saturn in their orbit, Neptune in particular is not at the best location with how close it is to the horizon. Uranus is going to be your best bet to make out a disk at 200 or 400 times magnification, but even that's going to be difficult under some sky conditions. If you're curious about how to image these planets, I'll be sure to tag a video I've made recently about the processes I use with my telescope, cell phone, and DSLR.
Now let's leave the confines of our solar system and talk about some of the best deep sky objects that you can observe and image for the winter of 2021. The winter sky hosts some of the best open clusters of the year. Let's start with M45, the Pleiades. This open cluster is one of the best targets of the year and can be viewed with a large telescope, binoculars, or just the naked eye. As you begin to go from low to high magnification views, you will notice more and more stars showing up and perhaps even some hints of nebulosity under very dark skies with larger telescopes. Now let's move up to the constellation Auriga, where we will find M37 and M35 just to the left of it in the constellation Gemini. This brings us to NGC 2264, better known as the Christmas Tree Star Cluster. This cluster consists of about 80 stars that form the shape of, you guessed it, a Christmas tree. As we move on over to the constellation Cancer, we find M67 and its neighbor M44, the Beehive Cluster, which is one of the closest open clusters to our solar system. Out of all of these wonderful objects though, the main event for me this winter is gonna be observing and imaging none other than the great Orion Nebula. No deep sky object has probably been more observed or imaged than this bright nebula. Start with the lowest magnification you can and slowly work your way up, studying the interior core of this star forming region of space. If you live under incredibly dark skies, this is even one of the few deep sky objects that can be viewed with the naked eye. If you're looking to image any of these deep sky objects, you're gonna need a tracking mount to take long exposure images, letting the sensor of your DSLR soak up light for up to minutes at a time that you can later stack and process to bring out incredible detail. I hope you found this guide to the winter sky helpful. Space is really big, and I'm sure I left off some impressive targets that you enjoy observing or imaging. If there's anything that I left off of this video that you love to look at in the nighttime sky, please be sure to let me know what that is in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support, and clear skies from late night astronomy.